Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Glenn. I'm a, a fourth year here at Mississippi State um, College of Veterinary Medicine. I'm from Madison, Mississippi. I did undergrad here at State and have really enjoyed um, all my time here, especially at the vet school. I'm currently interested in small animal oncology and general practice and really just client education with oncology um, going forward. So today I have Dr. Markhart here with us. She's the assistant professor for oncology and she's going to answer some questions just about what oncology looks like at Mississippi State and how you can learn more about it. So Dr. Markhart, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you, Lauren? Good. good. Thanks for joining us. I wanted to start with um, if you could just tell us about your career path and kind of how you got interested in oncology. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I grew up in Seattle and I did my vet school at Washington State University. And I went into vet school thinking, I think like many people do, that I wanted to be a small animal general practitioner and go back to Seattle and practice there. And as I got into my first year, I got some contact with uh, some of our specialists and specifically one of our internal medicine specialists. And that got me starting to think that a specialty career in vet med might be a good fit for me. And over the course of the next year or so, I had more contact with the oncology service and realized that was something that really, really interested me. So I went through most of vet school knowing that I wanted to be an oncologist um, my path toward specialization was maybe a little bit more prolonged than most people. I did the standard rotating internship, and then I did an oncology internship, but then for some complicated life-related reasons, I took a couple of years off and did small animal general practice in Florida before finally going back and then doing my residency in oncology at Auburn University, and then uh, when I finished that up, I came back here to join the faculty here and I've been on faculty here since 2016. Okay. Awesome. Um, I think it's neat in vet med how everyone's career path's different and how like no, no time's wasted. You learn so much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I guess one thing you would ask, which I didn't really answer was, you know, sort of what got me interested in oncology specifically. And I think even before vet school, I had an interest in oncology just from personal experiences, like many people do. We had a family dog that had been diagnosed with cancer. One of my grandmothers was diagnosed with cancer. And so that was something on my radar as, um, how should I say, it, something that's very sort of meaningful and impactful in people's lives when a family member is diagnosed with it, whether that's a, a human family member or a, or a pet. And then as I got into things in vet school, like I said, I realized that it was just a really good fit for me in terms of I was very interested in the molecular biology of it, but also the, um, the things that we could do for families that were experiencing this who had, you know, pets that had been diagnosed and essentially how to take the anxiety about that situation down a notch and figure out how to help that pet and really get them some time when the family felt like they had been really given a devastating diagnosis. Yeah, that's awesome. I think it's kind of neat in Vetman how we can kind of almost be counselors for people. Um, yeah. Um, and one of the things that I did in, in vet school was I worked the pet loss hotline for the first three years before I got onto clinics. And so obviously there was a lot of grief counseling that went along with that and, and helping people. And I discovered that that's something that I really, really like, and I think I'm pretty good at, and there's a lot of that in oncology for better or worse. And so it really, um, kind of speaks to one of my skill sets. Yeah, that's awesome. So I'll, um, ask another question, just kind of what's your role at Mississippi state, um, college of veterinary medicine and kind of how do you get to interact with students? Yeah, absolutely. So um, like you said at the beginning, I'm an assistant clinical professor and the clinical designation means that I spend most of my time on the clinic floor. Um, most of my job is to see cases and teach students, not so much um, kind of on the research and, and publication side. And so the majority of my time is spent down in the hospital on the clinic floor seeing cases and I supervise the fourth year vet students as they come through their clinical rotations and see oncology cases, which is 
you know, where you and I last saw each other. And I also supervise the house officers that are in training. So the vets that are coming through as rotating interns, uh, specialty interns in oncology, medicine, house officers. Um, so I'm sort of the, I think of myself as the safety net and the person behind the curtain. So I don't have as much contact with the clients, but I have a lot of time uh, interacting with the students. Um, and really my goal is to help them be the vet as much as possible. So to, to help you guys think about if you were in practice a year down the road, how would you approach this? How would you talk to the client about it? What kind of tests do we need to run? And so that's the majority of my contact with students. I also do some lectures. Um, so I teach um, in the small animal medicine and surgery course in spring of second year. And I have about 13 lectures in oncology there. I have guest lectures in other courses. So I talk about chemo for a couple of lectures in the pharm pharmacology course. And I talk about oral and gastrointestinal tumors in the GI elective and some cat specific issues in the feline medicine course and, and so on. And then my favorite two weeks of the year is when I get to teach the oncology elective at usually the end of November and beginning of December. And that's an elective course for the third and the fourth year students. Um, it's all oncology all the time for about two weeks, um, trying to focus on things that are useful for folks for boards prep, but also just for life with the understanding that most most people who come through, most students who come through are not going to grow up to be oncologists. They're going to go out into the, into the real world and be general practitioners, but that also means they're going to be seeing and diagnosing a lot of cancer. So I try to keep that elective very clinically relevant and give folks tools that will help them be better general practitioners as their oncology cases come through their clinic. It was definitely my experience like on oncology got lots of practice with how to great um, hard news to clients, which is something that is hard to do, but necessary. So yeah, uh, it is. And, and it's a, that is a skill set that is not unique to oncology, unfortunately. And, and obviously, so, you know, that's the, the sadder part of our job as vets, but being able to do that in a way that is smooth and compassionate and still informative is one of the things that we can do to help make a crummy situation for clients a little bit less crummy um, to, you know, sort of help them come to terms with things as best we can. What opportunities are there for students to learn more about veterinary oncology? We kind of touched base a little bit, but um, if you could just expand on that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so like we talked about, there's a fair bit of oncology exposure in the classroom setting before students get to the clinic floor. Uh, then once you all get to clinics, you come through um, and get to see oncology cases with me. Um, and that's probably the, the most... Um, Again, intense is not the right word, but that's where you're going to get the majority of your hands-on real-world oncology experience for people that are, for students that are interested in oncology and want to go into it at a, deep, at a deeper level. Things like taking the oncology elective are a possibility. There's also the option for students to do what's called an ACR or advanced clinical rotation, where they can circle back and do an additional two weeks in a service of their choice. Um, so students could come back and do an additional two weeks uh, with me where rather than seeing medicine and oncology cases together, which is what you experienced, somebody could come through and do just oncology cases for two weeks. And when I have students do that, I try to um, let them ha really have their pick of the cases on the schedule, choose things that seem more interesting to them or that they think would be a little bit of a challenge so that they can learn a little bit more and stretch themselves a little bit more. And I also, when we're talking about cases, have, you know, asked them to try to be thinking about things at a higher level. Um, you know, you've already had your original oncology and medicine rotation. So let's come back, let's delve into things a little bit deeper. Um, and then there are also some research opportunities. I, I don't personally have a research program like we said at the beginning, but there are some projects that are going on in clinical pathology and with some of the internal medicine faculty that are related to oncology. So there are opportunities for students to plug into research. And then I've also helped students set up externships at oncology clinics. So during their fourth year and some of those free blocks where they get to go out and go to other practices, I've helped students set up uh, out rotations with other oncologists at other practices so that they can get a little bit more exposure see how things are done a little bit differently someplace else.
That's the thing I love about state is all four years you get exposure to whatever you love because the curriculum can be so flexible, which is really yeah, cool. absolutely. And that that's it's something that I've seen since I've been here that was very different from my experience as a vet student. Um, I think the the two by two curriculum where students get two full years on clinics, um, a I think helps us generate students that are much more confident and much more proficient and have a much better ability to hit the ground running on that first day after graduation when they've got DVM behind their name and they have to go out into the real world and, and do the scary stuff and be the doctor. Um, right, it's coming up. Um, and so I do see students out of this program as a general rule graduate with a lot more confidence and a lot stronger clinical skills. But the other really nice thing about that extra year on clinics is is you guys have so much more flexibility in your schedule for doing electives and doing out rotations and doing externships and doing things like coming back for an ACR or going out to multiple practices. Um, you know, maybe you like oncology, but you don't know if you want to do oncology as a career. So you can spend a little bit of time with me or you can go out and see how it's done someplace else and get that extra exposure to help you really guide where you think you might want to go career-wise. Um, and that that additional time and flexibility is, I think, pretty unique to, to state. What do you think the future of uh, veterinary oncology holds? Oh, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> lots of um, lots of new and exciting things. When I when I graduated from vet school, the majority of what we did for our patients was still very much just straight surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, and most of the developments were still focused on how can we better tweak those protocols? Can What if we do this chemotherapy drug and this chemotherapy drug together or in alternation, can we get a better outcome? And, and what I've seen over the last few years is that there is much more of a move towards some things that have been in play on the human oncology side for a while. Immunotherapy um, is playing a larger role. Um, there are not a lot of commercially available immunotherapy options for veterinary tumors, um, just a handful right now and a few that have been explored and, and haven't quite panned out yet, but there's a lot of research in that area right now. And that's something that's made a huge difference for some patients on the human oncology side. And we're trying to get there in veterinary medicine. And the other thing that is really coming to the forefront over the last few years is the idea of using more targeted therapeutic drugs and looking at whether some of, again, some of those drugs that are used on the human side can be used in veterinary patients. Do they bind to the same targets? Can we get some efficacy with maybe fewer of the broad spectrum side effects that we see with our traditional chemotherapy drugs? And then finally, the idea of tailored medicine, and this is... Um, um, something that I'd say is really pretty new, but the idea of taking one individual patient's tumor and looking at specific genetic mutations to try to predict which chemotherapy drugs or which protocols the, their tumor might be most sensitive to, um, you know, rather than saying, all right, this is standard of care for every dog with lymphoma. Let's look at this one dog's tumor type and mutations and genetic sequences and try to predict out of all of the protocols that we have and all of the drugs that we have, can we make a better guess or a better estimate as far as which of the available protocols are going to be most helpful for this patient. And that's something that I would say is really still brand new and in its infancy, but it's kind of exciting and holds a lot of promise. I know that there's so much to change and it's changed so much in the human world that I know it's going to continue yeah. to change in the veterinary world too. Yeah. And, and again, that's one of the things that I really love about oncology is it is an evolving service. It is an evolving field of medicine and at a molecular level, I think it's fascinating. Um, on a clinical level, it's a really good fit for me in terms of the ways that it allows me to interact with clients and teach clients. And I, I really do see myself not only as somebody who teaches students, but a lot of it is about educating clients, about helping them navigate choices. And so I feel like I do almost as much teaching in the exam room as I do on the clinic floor behind the scenes when the clients can't see. Um, and it's, it's a fascinating subject to me. I love it. I can't imagine doing anything else. And I love teaching it to students. I'll kind of finish up with what advice do you have for students that are interested in specializing in oncology? Okay. Um, 
So I would say one thing is get as much exposure to it as you can make sure that it's a good fit for you. Um, and that can be through opportunities, you know, in vet school here at state for students that are here um, through externships and things like that. I also think it's really important not to get tunnel vision and say, I want to be an oncologist, therefore I don't have to learn about anything else because that's not quite how it works. Um, you know, the best oncologists are also good general practice veterinarians and still know a lot about other things, you know, medicine plays into it, orthopedics plays into it, nutrition plays into it, you know, derm plays into it still. And so you can't, you can't just focus on oncology to the, um, to the exclusion or the detriment of those other things. So making sure that you still maintain a really good, broad foundational knowledge. Um, unfortunately for better or worse, the, process of getting into the internships and the residencies is competitive. Um, grades do play a role in that. And so when I've got student um, mentees, when I'm, when I'm advising students who want to specialize, whether that's in oncology or something else, uh, far more than for somebody who wants to go into general practice, it's really, really important to keep your grades up um, because that's something that you can never go back and change afterward. Um, you can always get more experience. You can always, um, you know, get better at doing certain techniques or get better at something on the clinic floor. But once that class is done, you, you're not going back and taking it again. Um, and so really focusing on kind of strong academic performance all the way through um, is something that will, will help lay a good foundation for being competitive, for getting into the specialty training programs. But as you're doing that, the, the side benefit is you're, you know, you're learning the material and you're getting that really good, broad educational base that's going to serve you well as you move forward. Thank you so much for your time and thank you everybody for joining us. All right. Thanks everybody.